Welcome back and now for the news in detail. We start from the US which is building a military coalition to monitor and safeguard the strategic waters near Iran and Yemen. Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Joseph Dunford says the US would provide command ships and lead surveillance for the alliance. Dunford said the US hopes to enlist allies over the next few weeks. We're engaging now with a number of countries uh, to, see, uh, to see if we can put together uh, a coalition uh, that would ensure freedom of navigation, uh, both in the Straits of Hormuz and the Bab al and so. U.S. allies have shared concerns regarding possible Houthi attacks in the Bab al mandab waterway. Now moving on, Europe has called an urgent meeting of the 2015 Iran nuclear deal signatories to discuss Tehran's compliance. The European consigners have asked Tehran to stop enriching and stockpiling uranium with immediate effect. Germany, France, Britain and the EU have told Iran it must stop violating its commitments to stay in the accord. The conveying of a joint commission comes as a warning the Europeans are moving closer to a formal complaint against Iran. According to the deal, an unresolved complaint could lead to the reimposition of sanctions the accord lifted. This comes a day after U.S. inspectors confirmed Iran had begun enriching uranium over the stipulated limits. UK PM front-runner Boris Johnson has said US is Britain's most important ally. His remarks come amid a diplomatic row between the two countries over the UK envoy's leaked memos. Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt dubbed Trump's comments on the issue disgraceful and wrong. US President Donald Trump has lashed out at British Prime Minister Theresa May following a leak of cables describing her as inept. Trump criticized May's handling of Brexit, claiming that she ignored his advice on how to negotiate. Boris Johnson hinted that he shares Trump's views of May's handling of Brexit. Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt said Trump is wrong in making disparaging remarks about the UK officials. Hunt said if he becomes the Prime Minister, the ambassador will stay. Britain's opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn says that the next prime minister must put Brexit to a second referendum. The Labour leader says his party would campaign to stay in the European Union to avoid a no-deal Brexit. But he stopped short of saying how he'd solve the Brexit crisis if he were the prime minister. The Brexit issue has deeply divided the party, but the majority of the Labour MPs strongly support remaining in the European bloc. Now moving on, top US and Chinese negotiators have re-engaged over their trade war for the first time since last month's G20 summit. US Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin spoke to China's Vice Premier Liu He about restarting the trade talks. White House says the telephone conversation was constructive and face-to-face -face meeting of negotiators is expected soon. Meeting at the G20 summit, U.S. President Donald Trump and China's President Xi Jinping agreed to resume talks after they broke down in May. The U.S. Treasury has put sanctions on three top Hezbollah members, including two Lebanese parliamentarians and a security official. They are accused of coordinating between Hezbollah and Lebanese security agencies. The sanctions prevent them dealing with the U.S. citizens and block any assets they may hold in the U.S. The move also limits their access to the American financial system. A State Department official says the message given to the Lebanese government is cut its links with these figures. This is the first time the U.S. Treasury has sanctioned Lebanese members of the parliament. A court run by Yemen's Houthi rebels has sentenced 30 people to death for spying for the Saudi-led coalition. The convicted prisoners include academics, trade unionists and the preachers. Six others have been acquitted. The men were accused of passing information to coalition on locations for air strikes. They have already been in custody for the past year.
Libyan officials say 100 migrants have been allowed to leave the Tripoli detention center hit by a deadly air raid in a week ago. 53 migrants were killed and 130 others injured in the strike blamed on eastern forces led by Khalifa Haftar. Officials say they allowed the migrants to walk free following protests against exclusion from the UN's evacuation list. It was not immediately clear where they intend to go. 110 others have chosen to remain at the center, saying they feel severely insecure. Kazakhstan has invited permanent members of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe for talks on resolving Afghanistan's problems. This comes after Taliban and Afghan delegates agreed to a roadmap for peace at the conclusion of the two days of dialogue in Doha. The planned talks in Kazakhstan in October will coincide with a meeting of OSCE permanent members. Kazakh Foreign Minister Behbud Atamkulov says the talks will focus on OSE's involvement in post-conflict rehabilitation of Afghanistan. The 57-member OSCE is the world's largest security-oriented organization. Russian President Vladimir Putin says he is against economic sanctions on Georgia. He says he opposes any measures that would harm Russian relations with its neighbor. This comes after the Russian parliament adopted a resolution urging the government to slap sanctions on Georgia. Lawmakers called for the sanctions in response to Georgia's anti-Russian protests. Moscow is irked by the protests in Tbilisi, as well as a tirade against President Vladimir Putin on a Georgian TV channel. The Kremlin has already suspended passenger flights between the two countries. Turkish President Atayev Erdogan says short-sighted anti-immigrant populism in some EU states has stalled the Balkan region's integration into the bloc. Erdogan and other speakers at the Balkan summit in Sarajevo criticized the European Union's reluctance to grow the bloc. The Turkish president says populist circles have weakened the region's stability by undermining EU expansion. Adwan said Balkan countries should boost economic cooperation and the belgrade Sarajevo Expressway is of strategic importance. Turkey's own bid for EU membership has been stalled for years with bloc's officials citing human rights and civil liberties issues. At least 47 migrants rescued from a boat in the Mediterranean have been taken to a port in southern Sicily's town of Pozzalo. Italy plans to throw more resources into its fight to curb inflow of boat migrants. The details are in this report. After a sharp fall in migrant arrivals in recent months, the numbers have picked up since June. Another batch of migrants was rescued by the Italian Coast Guard and transferred onto a police patrol vessel which brought them to port. The port doctor says the migrants were part of a group of 53 people, with six of them requiring urgent medical care, who were then taken to Lampedusa. The situation on board was calm. Total 47 non-EU citizens were given the authorization to disembark the ship. 10 of them were women and 36 men. They were all in good health because they were part of a group that was rescued from a boat and the people who were not well were already taken to Lampedusa. Moreover, German rescue ship Alan Kurdi saved 44 people from a wooden boat off the coast of Libya. Those rescued came from Syria, Libya, Pakistan, Bangladesh and Guinea. Alan Kurdi is the latest of several vessels which is carrying migrants that have faced problems trying to dock on an Italian port in the past couple of weeks. Moving on, Italy has closed Europe's once biggest migration reception center in Sicily under the supervision of Interior Minister Matteo Salvini. Salvini has spearheaded Italy's hardline stance towards migration. The Italian Interior Minister attended the closure of a migrant center in Meneo, which housed more than 4,000 people. The last inhabitants were shifted to another center in Calabria last week. Salvini says the future is in smaller and more controlled centers.
The death toll from heavy flooding in Russia's Siberian Irkutsk region has risen to 24. Emergency services say nine others are still missing, while 143 more have been hospitalized. The government has declared a state of emergency in all affected areas of Siberia. The floods have put 83 settlements in six districts underwater, forcing 32,000 residents from their homes. Moving on, European regulators have ordered inspection of an older Airbus A380 after cracks were detected in wings of the aircraft. The company confirmed that small cracks have been found on the outer rear wing as far as the early production A380 aircraft. Airbus says it has identified the issue and designed an inspection and repair scheme. It says the ongoing airworthiness of the A380 fleet is not affected. In 2012, Airbus was forced to carry out a 380 inspections and devise a costly repair program after cracks were found on part of its wings. Airbus announced in February that it would stop production of the A380 with the last one to be delivered in 2021. Indonesia says it is planning to send back 210 tons of trash to Australia. This comes after Philippines returned waste containers to Canada. More details in this report. This is the second time in less than a month that Indonesia re-exported contaminated waste. The eight containers seized at Indonesia's Tanjung Perak port contained plastic bottles and electronic products. A port official says three companies are involved in the shipment. Like I said before, there are three companies involved. It is up to the companies to decide when they will re-export. Once they submit the request, we will investigate and act accordingly. Indonesia, Malaysia and the Philippines are sending back trash amid a spike in imports from Western countries. The move has disrupted the global flow of millions of tons of waste each year. More stories to follow right after a short break. Stay tuned with Indus News. Welcome back. The next session of the World Heritage Committee of UNESCO will be held in China. The session will be organized in Fuzhou, East China, Fujian province. China will host the event for the second time. The committee meets every year to add sites to the World Heritage List. During this year's session in Azerbaijan, 29 sites, including two from China, were added to the World Heritage List. Turkey is home to over three and a half million Syrian refugees. This is the largest population of people displaced by the eight-year civil war hosted by any country. But anger is rising against refugees amid a stumbling economy. Details in this report. Shops with Arabic storefronts have become a common sight in Istanbul since the beginning of the Syrian civil war. Half a million displaced Syrians have settled in the city. But unemployment is rising, causing bitterness against refugees. In June, Syrian-owned businesses were attacked in western Istanbul. They saw that there was Arabic signs at my neighborhood. So they started hitting the storefront with stones. They started destroying it. My Turkish neighbor came out and yelled at them, saying that this is a good Syrian, leave him alone. So they left. Such attacks are rare in Turkey. There was only one similar attack this year in February, also in Western Istanbul. But smaller spats are frequent and are often uploaded on social media. We will make an effort to create a basis for Syrian migrants to return to their homeland, their free homeland. I'd like to state that clearly. Otherwise, we will have some security concerns that would really trouble us all and there would be street clashes. 80,000 refugees returned to Syria in the first half of 2019. This is a very small fraction of the actual number of displaced persons in Turkey. Many prefer to stay and build a life here, but some shop 
shopkeepers admit they are considering putting up storefront in Turkish in a bid to hide their identity. The French government has announced it will fund emission-free transportation projects by taxing plane tickets. The tax will uh, add up to $20 and will be charged on tickets for all the flights from the airports in France. More in this report. During this summer, France faced its worst heat wave ever, with temperatures reaching over 40 degrees Celsius. The United Nations has attributed the change in temperatures to global warming. Now, France has decided to tax plane tickets to fund green transportation projects. The eco contribution will be 1.50 euros in eco class within the European Union, 9 euros within the European Union for business class, 3 euros outside the European Union in eco class, and 18 euros outside the European Union in business class. The scheme will begin in 2020 and is expected to collect 182 million euros a year. France also signed the Paris Accord, which aims to strengthen the global response to climate change. And that's all for now. For further updates, stay tuned to Indices.